likes to have a dominating influence, I would should say like a, a paternalistic influence over you. Very much like an old Victorian paternalistic boss. Most of the time we just got on with it and, and pretty much did as we were told, didn't we? Yeah. At the beginning, yeah. At the beginning. Yeah, fucking pull the monitors off, for Christ's sake! Like a matter of life or death, the fall gig, wasn't it? Like, oh, yeah. There was a... Uh, couldn't be seen to enjoy yourself, could you? No. I've never been in a room that so crackled with malevolence. I mean, it was, I, we had our backs to the wall at the far end of the room and were extraordinarily grateful to have done so. I mean, there was so much hostility and rancour. I remember this one gig we did. It was only a little club, but it was, it was that low that... We couldn't hear what was going on the other side of the stage. I couldn't hear Steve and Craig, and they couldn't hear me. So me and Craig swapped over sides. Uh, up in a room, uh, there's a cloud of smoke. Uh, yeah, fucking get it together instead of showing off. Uh. Well, we got all right. Bollock him when we got off. What are you doing? You know, you know, who do you think you are? You're not in a big rock combo, you know. You're not in U2, but he's swapping sides and messing about. No, I think Mark's got a different idea. I don't think the other guys quite grasp it. When Mark Riley is from a different background again and his culture is different and he thinks in terms of a conventional group writing nice songs. I don't think Mark Smith wants to be a, a, a pop artist or a rock star, you know. My relationship with Mark Smith started off brilliantly and ended not so brilliantly, really. You could kind of see it coming, I think. Yeah, there have been various arguments and, you know, fallings out and it seemed to be... A lot of difference of opinion on how things should be done. I was probably just a little bit more vocal about it, which would still be not very vocal, and it certainly wouldn't be, you know, fist flailing and fingers pointing. It'd be just like, well, excuse me, but well, we're not quite happy about that, you know. Mark Smith is quite critical of Mark Riley's playing and, you know, his attitude. Mark Riley, he wanted to do stuff his way, and I think that kind of, that clash... Well, he wanted to do the hits every night, you know, I don't know, it's not the, the group. <laughs> it was like there's only one leader in the fall, you know, Mark, and then I suppose Mark was a bit of a challenge to that. He said, we're going to Europe in, in about a month. I went, all right, OK, he says, but uh, I don't want you to come. I was like, what? And he said, yeah, we're going to do it without you. I said, all oh, right, OK. Um, he said, if you don't go very well, <laughs> we'll call you when we get back and you can rejoin the band, and I'm like... Right, OK. <laughs> like, in the days, you know, so... The next thing I knew, they were, yeah, it's about a month later, I think, and they were going to Europe. I've still had the phone call. Well, it just carried on, really. Uh, Kay was still the manager, and she'd set the, this American tour up, so we went and did that, and uh, Kay... <laughs> I don't really want to say that, do I, really? I don't want to say that... Mark K left Mark and then he met Bricks all on the same tour. <laughs> but, uh, that's how it happened. <laughs> the man who's had an expanded. The answer being said, uh, I don't like your records much, but uh, what are your lyrics about? You know? So we just got on from there. Uh, we got married. No, that's not what I said. I said, what? I said. It, you were. I said, said. Well, it was like um, <laughs> I thought you guys were brilliant, but I can't understand your lyrics, and they irritate me because I can't understand them. What I meant to like, say. The story of the fall uh, and Marky Smith over the last quarter of a century has so many elements that it's got to have a soap element, and it's got to have the, the Elizabeth Taylor and Burton element. It's got to have the Paul and Linda McCartney element. It's got to have that kind of weird, odd sexual thing going on. And it was the la again, it, it was the last thing you would have expected Mark E. Smith to get involved in. You know, having his wife in the band. Kicker, kid conspiracy, kicker, kid conspiracy, Jake Hells, panic break, slickers, king of team. It was like fall was one of them things that, you know, it's, I was on the verge of splitting up, really. So Brick sort of brought a bit of a new life back into it, I think. Different ideas and, you know, wasn't just some miserable blokes from Manchester <laughs> involved. What's a computer? It is a What's a computer? It is a computer! She brought a particularly different American work ethic into the equation, which is get some money, try for a hit.
I actually uh, sacrificed my principles in order to get the fall on television. I wanted to pick somebody who's like a favourite of mine for a number of years, and uh, funnily enough, they've never done uh, national TV in this country before. They've done a couple of local things, but they've never been on national TV, which seemed to me to be shocking. Mm -hmm. So uh, I quite wanted to go down in history as uh, the man well, who put them on TV. When they'd said to me, well, you know, how much do you want for coming up today? I said, I'll, I'll come up for nothing if you let me pick a band to be on the programme. It's the fool! <laughs> I think Brix's impact on the band was one sartorial. You can see that they suddenly smartened up and they look like uh, a, a proposition that could get in the charts. Secondly, I think that she brought um, a more overt kind of American rock and roll sensibility to it, which um, which softened off, uh, softened up a lot of the rough edges of the sound. That was great, that whole thing when they were suddenly on TV and there was a, they would have champagne in the dressing room and it was oh, a great, and Mark was wearing those cool suits. Well the best thing was um, meeting uh, Bo Diddley and he was on this old rock and roll tour or something like that, and he said it was the biggest sort of crap I've ever experienced and, and he, said, he said but I did see you on that, that tube show. He said, I was watching it in the hotel. And I, like, I said, so Elton John and that, uh, Paulie Yates, what the hell's going on there? There's only one good rock and roll group, and it was you. He goes, and it was you. I'm like, it's Bo Diddley. Because I, I love Bo Diddley. Just for a little bit of time, they were like Mr. and Mrs. Rock and Roll, you know, or Mr. and Mrs. Strange, Deranged Rock and Roll, you know, it was, it was great. How long can you carry on, though, because... <laughs> I mean, to... would, I mean, would you like us to break up now? <laughs> I mean, yes, we will. Really... <laughs> you see, if you're in a business where it's all in the pursuit of novelty, I mean, that's, cool. that's fair enough, that's cool, but, I mean, no, we're not, no. He doesn't want to be in a rock band, and I don't think he sees the fall as a rock band in any sense. So I suppose he's always been wanting to take it into other artistic dimensions. Now, when I was working in Edinburgh during the summer, uh, lots of arts lovers were, were dribbling the...